caught up with Oregon's own Jackson Kaler. Jackson, what up? What are you oh, doing? Hi, Julie. You playing a little ring toss? I yeah, see you found the cart. Let's go three to the top, one on each side. One on each side. Yeah. Shall we toss it? Yeah. All right. Get Best first. thing about being in Williams. Oh, stop Ooh. it. One point to Julie. Ooh. Best part of being in Williams Court. Baseball. Ooh. Of course. Oh, that's a, that, How many did we Three. say that was? Yes, good job. Yeah. Okay, best thing you've eaten in the dining hall, because I heard their food is really good. The breakfasts are really good. Yeah. What else? Oh, three to two. Three to two. Julie's Ooh. making a comeback. It's a close game. We've been spending a lot of time together in the dorms here. Yeah. What are you guys doing? Well, we made up this foam baseball game. It's like, little, it's like, a, it's like half the size of a real baseball. You can't use bats, because there's lights and everything, and stuff yeah. to break. Oh, Ooh. Julie's tied what, three. What a shot. Um, Oh, four to three. So instead, we just use our hands. We just slap it. It's pretty fun. Wait, I need to yeah. get this one, right? Yeah, you gotta hit it. Can I? Oh, oh she's short. One. The Little League World Series on ESPN is presented by T-Mobile, the leader in 5G, and in part by Honda. It's another beautiful night from Williamsport. 84 degrees as the sun is beginning to set, and it's an elimination game between New Hampshire and Oregon. Now let's take a minute and present you with the team's lineup from Hookset, New Hampshire. My name is Dominic LeBranch, and my favorite baseball player is Kike Hernandez. My name is Callum Murphy, and my favorite dessert is cookie dough ice cream. My name is Ryan Gatsby, and my favorite food is steak. My name is Kobe Acevedo, and my favorite baseball player is Javier Baez. My name is Keith Townsend, and my favorite actor is Adam Sandler. My name is Timothy Evans, and my favorite food is chicken tenders. My name is Mason DeVal, my favorite actor is Chadwick Boseman. My name is Liam Carter Patton, my favorite subjects in school are math and history. My name is Ryze Zemisho, and my favorite actor is Adam Sandler. My name is Tristan Lucier. My favorite baseball player is Shohei Otani. My name is Braden Connolly, and my favorite emoji to use is the guilty face. My name is Callum Lucier, and my favorite sports team is the Boston Bruins. My name is Tyler Chavette, and my favorite actor is Robert Downey Jr. And facing this tough lineup of hitters today will be Oregon's pitcher Ben Robertson. He's on the mound right now warming up, and he's a big time power at the plate, but we're ready to see him on the mound. And Mone, he's looking to shake off a really rough day yesterday against South Dakota. He came in the bottom of the fifth, and he gave up the three-run home run to Gavin Weir that won South Dakota the game, and he also made the last out. So as a pitcher yourself back in the day, how do you shake that off after not even a one-day layoff? Just forget about it, you know? It's, it happened, and it's time to, you know, it's a brand new game, time to focus on what you have to do in this game to help your team move on in the tournament. So. I think for him, it's just to keep going out there and pounding the strike zone and just doing Play. what's best for his team. Dom LeBranch leads off for New Hampshire. Two for five so far this tournament with a double, and that is strike one to him. LeBranch, one of the few 11-year-olds in Little League. Four, seven for the Mighty Might. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Outside corner, strike two. He's 11 right now, but actually in a little less than a week, he's going to be 12 years old. He has a birthday coming up on August 28th. Let's hope his team can stay in it longer so it gets closer yeah. and closer to his birthday in this elimination game. The stakes are high. One and two count now. As his teammates watch on in the dugout. Mason Deval on deck. The one-two oh. is fouled off. He stays alive. Robertson, his fifth pitch, and it is high for ball two. LeBranch usually a very good contact hitter. You'll see, as you saw in the foul before, you'll see him making contact and putting the ball in play. And he works the count full, three and two. LeBranch, his favorite non-sports TV show, and it's kind of funny because it, it really is a sports TV show. Holy moly. 
Hosted by ESPN Zone, play-by-play -play man Joe Tessitore. The payoff pitch is grounded to third. The spinning play is not in time from Beckett Hayer. So a base hit for the branch. A leadoff single. I think that's a great piece of hitting right there. You know, it was close enough where it could be called a strike or a ball, and he just puts the ball in play, you know, doesn't do too much with it, and he just uses his speed and gets on base. Monet, what are your feelings on the third baseman cutting off the shortstop? Is that the right play there? Honestly, I think so, just because his momentum is normally taking him in that direction. Um, but he was on his knees, so it's a pretty tough play. Um, but, you know, Brant, LeBranch just has speed. This one hit well to left center, and it is gone! A two-run homer in the first, and it comes from the starting pitcher and the coach's son, Mason DeVale. Two nothing for the team from Hookset, New Hampshire already. Certainly a way to start a game right there. I mean, they know that he pounds the strike zone. Why not go up swinging first pitch fastball? You know, it fits right there. Don't hold back. I'll tell you, this Oregon team was so ready for the double play, playing double play depth, all ready to turn it, and then just the bomb to left center. You see in that replay, it's high fastball, and he just gets his barrel through the zone and just drives it out to left center. Doesn't get any better than that. And Mason DeVal, the starting pitcher in this game, the son of manager Tim. It was his father's 50th birthday on Saturday. His team got the win 4-1 to to stay alive against Tennessee, and he's pointing to the stands, probably to the rest of his family, after that two-run shot. And no outs, and already a lead for New Hampshire. Tristan Lucier to the plate. One of their most dangerous hitters, Monet. Yeah, I mean, looking at him now, and he stands pretty far from the plate, but... That's going to dribble foul down the left field line, 0 and 1. That was like one of those swinging bunts that you don't mean to do, but you get away with. He has another shot here to take a deep ball or put something in play. I notice in his swing, he, you know, he starts close, and then he also stays close throughout the entire swing. So his front foot is in front of his back foot, and he, that's how he's able to reach those outside pitches, which is pretty phenomenal for a kid his age. Nickname Pins, a big 5'8", 135 pounds. Also one of the best hockey players, not only in New Hampshire for his age, but in the Northeast region. Just an overall terrific athlete. And this New Hampshire team has a lot of multi-sport athletes and Lucier, the cream of the crop. As is his brother, as is tons of other players mm -hmm. on this team. A ball and a strike to him. Fouls another one back, one and two. Again, another look at the skyline here from Williamsport just outside Alamity Stadium. We've seen a lot of rain over the last few days, but none in sight today. Scorching heat on the radar. Lucier whacks one through the hole and in the right field. And three straight hits to get the party started for New Hampshire. Monet, if you're this pitcher, what are you thinking right now? Got to start hitting, hitting your spots. I mean, that was a breaking ball that just, you know, just broke right down the middle. Um, and he just led it well and just was able to hit the ball hard. So just hitting your spots, making sure you use the corners of the plates and not trying to use right down the middle too much. And here is Tristan's twin, Kaylin. Kaylin Lucier playing first tonight. The pitch Good. outside, but it gets the call 0-1. Exactly like you said, Monet went for that outside corner, giving him something that he could potentially hit, but a little bit harder to make contact on. Kaylin nearly an identical 5'8", 140. The 0-1, make it 0-2. Finding some stride on the outside part of the zone is Ben Robertson, who's already given up three hits and three batters faced. 1-1 one, one pitch for ball two. Oregon lost yesterday up against South Dakota, 3-0, won its first game against Pennsylvania, 8-2. This is popped up to the infield and caught by third baseman Beckett Hayer, who finally gets it out for New Hampshire. That'll bring up Keith Townsend, whose father Blair also coaches on the team. Townsend's a quiet kid, but he loves to laugh and loves to hit, and he's looking to make something happen here. Might play Little League, but he's a big Washington Capitals fan. 
and his favorite player, Alex Ovechkin. There's calling strike one. He's also a massive Shohei Otani fan, so he must have been quite excited, just like we were, to see him at the MLB Little League Classic two nights ago. The 0-1 from Robertson, swing and a miss. Over top of it is Townsend. And the Little League asked most kids the same questions in their questionnaire. One of them is, what do you want to do if you win the lottery? And Keith said he'd give 10% of his money to his friends. He goes down on strikes there. I want to be his friend. <laughs> if I'm getting 10% of that. I'm I think you can make that happen. Look, I mean, he goes back to the dugout now. I was thinking maybe I'd wave at him next go time bond, he's up at the plate. Go bomb with some 12-year-olds, Ian. Hey, <laughs> we're going to keep it up here in the booth here from Lomity Stadium. Two outs, runner on first, and Robertson already about to throw his 20th pitch of the inning. It is followed off by the sixth man in the order, Bryson Misho. I've noticed he's really been working that outside corner now. You know, giving, up, giving up those three hits to the first three batters, he's been pounding the outside part of the plate, and you know it's been working for him, so hopefully he can stay out there and maybe mixing it up with some inside pitches as well. And Misho described by manager Tim DeVale, Tim DeVal, excuse me, as the team's ringer. He's a great multi-sport athlete. He actually did not play baseball at all as the count now 0-2 from ages 7 to 10. Very dedicated to lacrosse, but Timmy Evans, one of his teammates, told him that he wanted him to play. He came on, and he's a superstar athlete. Ball. There's a ball outside corner one and two. Monet, you said that Robertson was one, working two. that outside corner. And uh, what do you think of that decision from him? I mean, it's working. You know, got the soft pop-up and then the strikeout looking. So why move away from it if it's working for you? The one-two pitch. This one oh, grounded foul to right field. Still one and two. Tried to catch him a little off guard there. Went inside. That pitch will come at you a little faster. And just a good defensive swing. If you miss it at the top of the inning, it was Mason, or excuse me, Tristan Lucier, who hit the two-run home run. Or excuse me, no, it was Mason DeVal. I was right the first time. Who hit the two-run home run that put New Hampshire up early. A great start. There he is. And he'll go on the mound in the bottom of the first. This one up the middle, and the force at second. Let's get another look at that wonderful homer from Mason DeVal. You could just hear it off the crack of the bat, and the fans knew it was gone. 2 nothing, New Hampshire over Oregon. Bottom one from Lomedy, and it's already 2 nothing. Hooks at New Hampshire over Lake Oswego, Oregon. Speaking of the latter, let's get a look at their lineup. My name is Ellis Bain, and my favorite team is the Seattle Mariners. My name is Crew, and my favorite athlete is Lionel Messi. My name is Ezra Carlson, and my favorite movie is Filled of Dreams. My name is Chase Kelly, and my favorite player is Zach Britton. My name is Cole Sturgeon, and my favorite food is Chipotle. My name is Jackson Kaler, and my favorite MLB team are the San Francisco Giants. My name is Nate Cook, and my favorite actor is Kevin Hart. My name is Ryan Warhank, and my favorite band is ACDC. My name is Ethan Euchre. My favorite movie is Space Jam, the original. My name is Kel Vandehey. My favorite sports team is the Los Angeles Angels. My name is Becca Hare, and my favorite baseball player is Madison Bumgarner. My name is Luke Smith, and my favorite team is the Seattle Mariners. My name is Ben Robertson, and my favorite food is smoked salmon. And facing this lineup of hitters will be the man of the hour, Mason Duvall on the mound. Just hit that two-run shot to left center and is ready to face this tough lineup of Oregon hitters. And it's funny because Mason's nickname is Warning Track because he always gets so close to hitting home runs. And finally in the championship game, he hit one. And finally tonight, he hit another one. So I think we can safely, Monet, put that nickname to rest. Did you ever have any teammates who you thought were more contact hitters and then all of a sudden one day they just had more power left in them? Of course, always. I mean, there's always those people on the team. I'm pretty sure I was a warning track hitter as well. Um, but, you know, our leadoff hitter, Scott Bandor, for the longest, was a great contact hitter. Now he's putting balls out all over the place. So 
Everyone goes through their warning track power phase, but they always grow out of it. And do you think it's, as you mentioned, is it growing out of it? Is it just but building into your frame that may be on lax that next level? Um, it's also some confidence, you know? If you have confidence in yourself, if you always tell yourself you're going to hit warning track power, then you're going to have that power. But mm -hmm. if you believe in yourself that you can hit it out and you, you know, put the work in and, you know, sometimes hit the gym, you might might grow out of it or just you know. get to become a stronger player. You got to always hit the gym. Ellis Bain leading off for Oregon. Two balls, no strikes to him. Up against oh. Mason DeVal. Make it 3-0 on the pitch upstairs. Bain is the youngest player on the team. As I mentioned earlier, he is 11. And he turned 11 in July. So he is really 11. Not 11 and a half. Not 11 and three quarters. He is, you know. Just There's not much more you can say about that. Just 11. Three balls and a strike as his mother watches on. Here's the pitch. Grounded to first backhanded and stepping on the bag for out number one is the twin of Mason Kalen. And that was just a really nice play by Kalen, having the awareness to come off the bag to get that ball, and then knowing that as he was speeding down the line, he had to get back to first and make the out. Up next for Oregon is Chase Kelly, who pitched four innings of shutout baseball yesterday, and is also manager Chris's son. Strike. There's strike one on the outside corner. For DeVal, Kelly 5'2", 84 pounds. A big Orioles fan because his father is from Baltimore Ball. and a fan of the team as well. Shows bunt but pulls it back one and one. In addition to the Orioles, his dad is also a big Ravens fan. Got both. There. Yes, loves Lamar Jackson. There is Chris, Chris who played baseball at Mount St. Mary's in Maryland. Ball. Shows Ball. bunt again and it is fouled off one and two. Monet, what was the thought process behind that? You already have one strike on you, but showing bunt with no one on base. It all depends on where the third baseman playing. If you see him playing back, why not lay one down? Easy base. Um, but, you know, who, who knows? Maybe just, just easy, it's an easy way to, you know, sneak a base runner on. So I don't mind it um, as long as, you know, get the bunt down in the right spot. And the first baseman is also standing back. So, as you said, makes sense for the bunt. And it's going to be a strikeout swinging for Chase Kelly as DeVal picks up his first strikeout of the evening. It's 2-0 New Hampshire here in the bottom of the first after a two-run shot from Mr. Mason DeVal in the top of the first. Here's Ben Robertson, pitcher on pitcher matchup. Upstairs, ball one. Ben's special talent is baking, and he's especially good at baking cookies. Then we should also hang out. The guy right. who's going to give me money if he wins the lottery, Stop. and the guy who's going to make me dessert after I celebrate getting that lottery. You just need to go socialize with them. You know, I'm an East Coast guy. They're West Coast guys. I don't really know how it will work. What's your favorite type of cookies? Oh, you can't go wrong with chocolate chip. But you know, I, I'm not going to say my One, favorite, two. but I think the most overrated cookie in the book is black and white. I actually agree with that. There we go. Because it depends, because sometimes yeah. it's really good, but I actually prefer the black and whites when the icing's still warm on them. Because once mm. it cools off, it's not as good. But chocolate chip is the best by far. Oh, I don't Ooh. know about that. I'm more of a snickerdoodle type of person. Oh, <laughs> that's not a common answer. That's I know. A good one. one, two. So I can totally agree with you. Chocolate chip is literally the best. The ones from Chick-fil-A, oh my gosh, they're the best. You got we'll have to get some. Single lined right to center field from Ben Robertson. First hit of the game for Oregon. Looking to turn it around here in the bottom of the first. That will bring up the cleanup hitter, Ethan Euchre, also catching tonight. Both pitchers really helping out their team here. Obviously, you saw Mason hit the bomb to left in the top of the first. In the bottom of the first here, you saw the other pitcher, Ben Robertson, get that single to put his team on base. No balls and a strike to Euchre. Big Seattle Seahawks fan and his favorite player, Russell Wilson. Ball. There's a ball, making it one and one. one, and, one. and his last name might be Euchre, but he is not related to Milwaukee Brewers legendary player and broadcaster, Bob Euchre. Swing and a miss, one and two. Looking to avoid stranding the runner on first, Robertson with two outs. One, two. 
Oregon looking for a little bit of positive momentum. And this one is lined right into the hand of Braden Connolly in the right place at the right time. Still 2-0 New Hampshire after one from Lomity in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Cracker, do you eat? Or a firecracker? Some sweet, something to eat at the baseball game, probably some sweet. Caramel popcorn? I feel like I know what it is though. It's a great snack and uh, best thing about it, you get a little prize in the bag. Oh, is this like popcorn kind of? Food, right, in the bag? It's like popcorn? Like it's a caramel and it has like a nut in it. I could eat about 10 bags of Cracker Jacks. Cracker Jack, yes, it's the thing they throw on the ground and goes the Cracker Jack is kind of, to me, just caramel popcorn. Take me out to the crowd, buy me some peanuts and... Cracker Jacks. Oh! Up to the booth here. I didn't get any in my mouth. You guys want some? I'm good. I'm no, good. You sure? Yeah. That's all, all right. you. Monet, you tell me you're not a big fan of popcorn. I'm not. No. Then what's your movie snack? Uh, I usually go for some uh, Twizzlers or maybe some M&Ms. Really? Do you like normal Twizzlers? Like I saw different flavors of Twizzlers yesterday. Just and that's, the regular. I respect that. Pull and yeah. peel Twizzlers are better than any of the other ones. But, I disagree. You know. oh, remember, Zoe, <laughs> yesterday when I bought you a bag of popcorn for $4 and uh, you didn't even first of have all, a bite? <laughs> First oh. of all, I didn't even know that it was there. Oh. It was for all of us, and I tried to buy it, but the car... You didn't know it was it there. Didn't... I carried it out in my hands. Did, you didn't even tell me you had it. The, I bought it for you. The woman, you knew I had it. I tried to buy it with my card, first of all. And it didn't work. And it, so it didn't work a, a because gen. it wasn't working with credit or debit cards there, so we had to pay with cash. And I, no, I paid And you cash. decided to pay with cash. That's fine. So, to save the day. I was not offered any, so I feel like that's on you. Okay. Yeah. So I think Ian was just being a gentleman. I was there for that whole encounter. Ian, you were totally being a gentleman. I respect you on that one. Zoe, I'm sorry. Like, I mean, the man got you popcorn, you know? You yeah, can't yeah. be too picky. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Tyler Chauvet leading off for New Hampshire. This inning grounds to second. Play made by Crew Corey over to Chase Kelly on first. One away for New Hampshire. Thank you, Haley. I appreciate the defense. Top of the second here in this elimination game from Williamsport. Both teams one and one so far in the tournament, and the loser goes home. This one aligned to left field, but the catch will be made. No, over the head of Luke Smith. And going for two is Braden Connolly. In the shimmy shimmy from the big man, too. He's Mo loving it. Monet, did you have a victory dance that you did when you got on base? Did you have a celebration? Uh, not in Little League, but in high school. Um, I would just wave from second base to the dugout. That was or, it? Or shoot the arrow, you know, classic shoot the arrow. Okay, all right. Oh, just we... wave. At first, that was so yeah. bad. Let me just give no, you no, a no, wave. No, 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 no. So I would wave, and everyone in the dugout would just be like, hi, Mo. So oh, it, okay. it was pretty cool. It was a team event. Yeah. You forgot, you left that out. That was Yeah, I know, my bad. But you know, you got to incorporate the team. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. A pinch runner is going to come in. It's going to be oh. Callan Murphy oh. for the big single, or excuse me, the big double hitter, Braden Connolly. And Connolly sporting some tape on his left wrist. That might be because he fractured it during one of the early days of practice and it was actually disallowed. The move was actually disallowed because you cannot do a special pinch run at this time. So Connolly will stay out there after hitting the double. In order for his at-bat to count, he had to get around the bases and finish running them. So that was why mm -hmm. they couldn't make the switch right there. Correct. Thank you, Zoe. That's what I'm here for. If I can't buy popcorn, I'm going to have to... Do something. Know. Yeah, exactly. Well said. Here's the bottom of the order with Jacoby Acevedo. Four foot nine, 95 pounds. The little man swings and misses to make it 0 and 2. 0 2. Another runner in scoring position for New Hampshire with one out. Top of the order up next with Dom LeBranch. 
The 0-2 pitch and fouled back and up the netting. So, Monet, what's going on here? In the beginning, it looked like everyone was early on the ball, but now I don't know what's going on. Um, I've seen a few swing, okay, guys, swings and misses at high pitches. Uh, maybe just not seeing the ball, okay. right? Um, but I do notice that most of their players are up in the box, which normally you wouldn't see, with, especially with the pitcher throwing hard, you see them back in the box. Grounded to the shortstop, and the throw is not in time for the first base back to Chase Kelly. Runners on the corners as New Hampshire looking for more in the top of the second. He had to come off the base, but that was certainly the right play. Didn't get more bases because of that. And you know, the three Bs, base, ball, and then backup. Ball, base, and then back up. My bad. Oh. He went for the ball first and then had the base, but it was too late. And now coming in is the pinch hitter. Pinch hitter, excuse me, Callan Murphy. Runners on the corners, one out. Top two. Callan go, waits go. on. Four foot 11, exactly 100 pounds. Big Seahawks fan and loves Tennessee Titans player Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry's a good one to love. That he Ball. is. Bunt is foul, not enough on it. 0-1. Mune, are you surprised to see these fielders still playing really far back? And we've seen Bunt attempts twice in this game. Uh, I'm a little shocked, Play. especially with the third baseman. Um, oh, he just moved in. But, yeah, normally, you know, you see so many bunt attempts that you, you just want to stay up and be cautious of it. And then when two strikes, just move back. Swing and a miss at pitch 37 from Ben Robertson. You know, Murphy, his father, is actually close friends with Ohio State's head coach in football, Ryan Day, who used to be a little leaguer with this same North Manchester oh. hookset little league team or at least in the same Little League overall. Day did an interview earlier this week with ESPN supporting New Hampshire from afar. A ball and two strikes to the pinch hitter, Callan Murphy. This one is ripped in the shallow right, and the run will score from Braden Conley. RBI single for New Hampshire, and the lead, extended by one, is now 3-0. Monet, on this hit here, we saw the runner stop at second. Would you have sent him to third or kept him at second? I would have kept him at second. Really? I feel like he could have been a little gutsy. He's fast, he's a quick guy, and the cut didn't even have it. Well, the right fielder, he did get the ball in pretty quickly, so I would have. I was looking at that, and I think the coach made a great decision. You know, you have your... Mason Duval coming up, who just hit a two-run homer. So why not? Why take that risk when you have your middle hitters coming up? Point made. More damage to be done potentially for New Hampshire. The starting pitcher already had the two-run shot, looking very much like his favorite player, Fernando Tatis Jr., in the top of the first. Ball. And there is ball raw two on the outside. Robertson now, Monet, with 41 pitches and just one and a third innings. Your thoughts on that? I mean, they've just been hitting. They're making them, mm -hmm. they're seeing pitches, which, you know, you want to do as a team. And Lined right up the middle, and it makes it through the gap. They're going to wave the runner home, and he makes it there. But score for Callan Murphy. Excuse me, no, it was actually Jacoby Acevedo who scores the run. Murphy to second in another RBI single for New Hampshire. 4 nothing. And as you mentioned, Monet, I mean, it really didn't matter that he didn't go to third, down, right? Still down. scored, got him in. Just two for two on the day. Really, really solid hitting from the pitcher. Swing and a miss from Tristan Lucier. And what great production from the top of the order, guys. The one, two, three hitters in the lineup are a perfect five for five so far. And that's how you get the offense jump started. First and second, still just one out. Outside for strike two. Robertson has now given up two runs in each of the first two innings he's pitched so far. We saw the coach visit the mound in the first inning. We haven't seen it yet in the second inning, but they can only visit once per inning. So do you think the next time he comes out will be a pitching change? I believe so. 
especially with, you know, 45 pitches. I think we'll see pitching change. Now remember, Oregon is without their ace, Chase Kelly, who is ineligible to pitch until Friday if his team makes it there as he pitched four full innings yesterday. 0-2. Oh this one is high, and mama mia, it is gone! Three more runs for New Hampshire! Tristan Lucier to the moon and back! 7-0 New Hampshire! You said the top of the order was five for five. Make that six for six. An absolute bomb. Turned on that ball, was able to take it deep. That was past the second brick fence back there. And two home runs from the one, two, three men in this order for New Hampshire. This offense is unreal. Just a breaking ball that just drops right in the zone and he waits back and just turns on that pitch. And we knew Lucier had it in him. He's been the star so far this tournament for New Hampshire. Heading into this game, he was two for four with a home run and a ribby. Now make it two homers and four RBIs. And that ball was fouled into the grass, trying to locate it there. And the home run balls go to the family, so that one is going to be a souvenir. To shallow left field, and the diving catch is not made. Kaylin Lucier to second, and the onslaught continues. What an offensive effort. Can we just talk about how fast he got to second base? I mean, we were all watching the catch, and I know there was a high fly ball, but basically by the time that ball landed, he was running in safe to second. That's why you run hard out of the box. You never know what could happen. And, you know, he just put himself in scoring position for his team to, you know, keep scoring runs. Six consecutive hits for New Hampshire. And now nine overall. Let's get a look at this mound visit right now. Right, what you can control and influence. So all this other stuff going on around you, don't worry about all that, okay? Just go after the hitter. Let's get this hitter one at a time. No problem, okay? Defense is kind of being squirrely right now, right? That's not your problem. Just go after him and do what you can control, which is great, okay? Go get him, kid, all right? That was one of the assistant coaches, Blair Townsend. And you looked at the graphic there at the bottom of the scorebook. He is throwing strikes, Monet. 75% on his 48 pitches now through one and a third innings. But they're just locating the ball in the zone. Yeah, it started off with that uh, that double by Braden Connolly. You know, Play. ball right over the center fielder's head. I mean, there's nothing much he can do except for keep throwing strikes, and hopefully, you know, the defense can pull it together and, you know, help their pitcher out. Yes, you heard Coach Townsend said the defense has been a little, quote, squirrely to this point, although no official errors charged against them. Monet, what does it feel like as a pitcher when your defense starts breaking down? Um, a little bit of a defensive mishap, maybe thinking to turn second, and the runner is safe at third. That is going to be runners on the corners once again with one out. It just looks like the defense a bit shaken after that error there. I mean, not counted as an error, but obviously hit him, hit his glove, and mm -hmm. popped out. A hard catch to make, though, on the dive. It looked like they just had a little bit of a miscommunication, weren't able to tag the runner. The shortstop became aware of the runner at a very late moment, decided to try and go for him, but he was already by. I'm not sure if we thought it was a force, because normally, runner on second base, um, ball hits to the left side. You normally don't run on that. You don't want to run into a tag. So I'm not sure not if bad, not uh, not the shortstop We're thought good. it was a force because he ran or just didn't get the tag in time. They're not going to count that as a hit from Keith Boy. Townsend, but he is on first base after the mishap at third from Beckett Hayer. Here comes Ryzen Misha. Ball. Ball one. Runners going a second, but the play is not made. They say he's in on time. On that play, I'm confused as to why that run didn't score. Usually if you have a run on third, you don't really throw down to second because that guy's going to come home. But he looked like he had no intention of coming home whatsoever. I mean, it did get cut off by the pitcher, so I, I mean, I wouldn't have come home. I would have stayed. I would have taken the lead, you know, just to see where that ball, if he was going to throw the third or second. And once he, you know, turned his body third or second, maybe take off. But, I mean, I'd rather be safe than sorry. There's only one out. You know, why not just, you know, hopefully this guy can uh, 
you know, put a ball in the hole and score two runs. Oregon just praying for a ground ball right now, trying to get out of this inning. There's the ground ball, but there's no runner at second and nowhere to throw the ball. The run will score for Kaylin Lucier. It's getting out of hand, and it's 8 nothing. And at this point, it's really just you can tell the defense has been knocked back a little bit, and they just don't really know what's going on. It, sometimes when an error happens, it happens over and over again, and it's one of those things where it just keeps spiraling. They got to really get themselves under control, get out of this inning, and get back up there and hit, because they're down eight, and they got to do something now. So that's an RBI single in the scorebook for Ryzen Misho. And now here's a pinch hitter, Ryan Gatsby, who fouls it away and out of a ballpark, 0-1. I've noticed all the mistakes that they're making are pretty mental. You know, hopefully when they get in the dugout, just calm, just calm each other down. You know, one one run at a time, one base at a time, and pretty sure literally you can come back from an 8-0 uh, loss. But you know, why not just calm down and just re restart here? I mean, we were talking about that this morning with your mom, Monet. We were saying that you know we see people are down four and they just come back as quick as anything. Runner takes second. So now second and third, 55 pitches for Ben Robertson. Three. Three. Jams up and strikeout. Greenlight is more than a debit card. It's a time saver, a teacher, a safety net. It's how millions of kids and teens learn about money every day and invest for the long term. Greenlight, it's the money app for families. Another pinch hitter in the ball game for oh. New Hampshire, it's Liam Carter Patton after another pinch hitter, Ryan Gaspi, called out on strikes. Looking. 8 nothing New Hampshire in the top of the second. Second and third, two outs. Robertson deals in a whiff from Patton. I've heard Liam has a really, really good Mickey Mouse impression, and I think we got to get to him at some point and ask him to do it for us. I do too, but you know what? I'm not going to use it on there. Swing and a miss. One and two. He's a company man. With the Disney brand. Calm and cool in that New Hampshire dugout. The one, two, and a swing and a miss. Back to back strikeouts for Robertson to end the inning. But 10 hits in this game and eight runs to show for it. Another look at the home run shot and one excited mom in the stands. Eight nothing New Hampshire. The ESPN's coverage of a Little League World Series presented by T-Mobile. Little League World Series presented by T-Mobile continues tomorrow with four games on our slate. At 1 o'clock, we have the winner of this game up against Ohio. At 3, we have Nebraska versus Texas. At 5, California and South Dakota. And at 7.30, Michigan, Hawaii. That should be a fun one. All of them right here on ESPN. Let's send it down now to Haley Galindo, who is with Tim, or excuse me, the, uh, the wife, I should say, of the mom of... Uh, Tim Vail and mate, the mom of Mason. All righty, thank you so much, Ian. Oh. I'm here with Mason's mommy. First of all, the energy in this crowd is insane. I mean, you guys are literally bringing it right now. So really quick, Mason developed a nickname called Warning Track. Now, I mean, we all just saw him go yard. So how special is that for you? That it's very special. That's the second home run that I've seen him do this year. And his nickname warning track is because he was always hitting it out to the warning track. He could never get it past that that spot. And this year he's just like the last playoffs of the season. He's just been hitting it. <laughs> yeah, so mom, he's actually on the mound tonight. I'm sure you're probably more nervous than he is. So what's going through your head right now? I don't know. I just hope that he's having fun. I hope that um, I don't know. I am more nervous than he is. I was so nervous today coming out here. Um, I always worry. I know he's really hard on himself, so I always worry that like if he has a bad inning, that it's just gonna take a toll on him. But he always picks himself back up and he gets right back out there and he just does it. And he threw a no hitter and um, 
in Bristol in his first inning, his first game on the mound. And they're called the comeback kids for a reason, but really quickly, we got to look at your shoes. I mean, it makes my shoes look so embarrassing. Don't look at my shoes. Look at her shoes. I mean, are you kidding me? Her shoes. That that's where'd you get them from? I didn't know. So I do. I have an home daycare, and um, one of the, the three-year-old that I babysit. Um, the three-year-old that I babysit. At the end of the year, they always get me a gift. And at the end, because they're teachers that I babysit for, so at the end of the school year, they give me a gift. And the three-year-old that I babysit for this year, this was my gift because we're always like going to baseball practice and baseball games. Like they leave my house Let's and we're leaving for practice or for games or whatever. And and she just loves watching the kids play. Thank you so much. Hey, great job. You're going to continue doing great. We're going to send it back to you guys. Every mom is going to have those shoes now. Even I, it's going to be on my cart now. <laughs> Let's go back to you guys. Thank you so much, Haley. Great toss, unlike mine, as I lost grasp of the English language for just a moment. <laughs> and great shoes for a really hot team right now. Look at that, the matching base. ring with the shoes. That's, that's quite the pair. They seem to be a bit lucky. Whoa. Unplanned. A leadoff walk for Crew Corey and two straight walks okay, way issued to go. Way to get on base. from DeVal as Ezra Carlston, with the bases loaded, gets the walk. New Hampshire's catcher is now going to go to a mound visit with him. It is going to be Tyler Chauvet with a quick little talk, trying to calm him down. Want to play Little League? It's easy. Visit playlittleleague.org and enter your address to find a Little League program near you. In the batter's box for Oregon, it's Beckett Hayer with first and second in no outs. Trying to rally from an 8 0 deficit in the bottom of a second. Now 30 pitches thrown for the for the Val. Upstairs ball two. Yeah. Mune, we just saw the catcher go out to the mound two pitches ago. What do you think he was saying? Just to calm down. Um, you have such a huge lead. There's no reason to, to rush. Just pound the strike zone, you know, let them hit the ball, let your fielders fill the, fill the ball and make outs for you. There's no reason to try to do everything yourself. And it's been a tough inning for him. 13 pitches thrown, just two strikes, 11 balls after a really strong bottom of the first. And now three straight walks issued. The latest to Beckett Hayer. And the bases are loaded for Oregon. They're not going away easily. You're good. Hey. Hey, easier is back here, right? This is 8-9 uh, in the top, all right? Hey, just groove them in there. Strikes, right? Um, no, just kind of play back a little bit. We're, we're up by eight runs, right? Don't play up, but let's try to get an out here, OK? All strikes here. Okay, just groove them in there. Let's go. Monet, what do you think of that from Chris Kelly? I mean, I totally agree, especially with the infield. Someone asked, should the infield be up? And there's no reason for an infield to be up, you know? Easy is bad, just like you said. Hopefully you can turn a double play if it's hit hard enough. But, you know, just like you said, just keep going strikes. Or, excuse me, that was not Chris Kelly. That was Tim DeVal. Bases loaded is scary enough. Bases loaded with box, no seven, outs seven. is probably the scariest situation a pitcher can face. Got to keep it under control. And Monet, I saw you nodding your head when the, when the coach was saying that, so I knew you agreed. Yeah, I have to. I mean, said the right things. Sturgeon with a line drive to center field, and Oregon finally puts one on the board as Crew Corey scores, and the bases still loaded with no outs. RBI single from Cole Sturgeon, and he's loving it, clapping back to his teammates. Just a good piece of hitting. Monet, what's going through the pitcher's mind right now? I mean, just if I were him, I would just be like, just keep throwing strikes. You know, you have a seven run lead. There's no reason to try to strike everyone out. Just let them put the ball in play, and if you know, they hit it hard enough, they deserved it. Did you ever find yourself in this situation? All the time. And just making sure I work my way back, you know, just throw one strike and you could oh. possibly turn a double play and get out of it with just giving up two runs. Um, but it's tough, but I think I think they can handle it. Bases loaded, no outs, and here's the bottom man in the order of Luke Smith. 
When he grows up, he wants to be an architectural engineer. Fouls that one back one and two. And he also loves Minecraft. And I think that really makes sense. I mean, I, what's not to love about Minecraft? Especially when you have that kind of passion. Exactly. Mom, I'm playing video games. No, I'm actually I'm learning what I want to do when I'm old. Yeah, I'm actually crafting my future. So, mm. so why? please let yeah. me stay on here. I don't need to do the homework. Don't tell me to get off. Yeah. No. I also think video games have become a huge part of everyone's lives just because everyone's been stuck in the house for so long and mm -hmm. what else to do but play video games. I mean, we were just talking about that Monet. Monet is on over a thousand levels of Candy Crush. So someone's been spending uh -oh. a lot of time over quarantine playing games. Oh, I, I downloaded it early quarantine, so I like didn't know what to do. Plus, I'm always on my phone, so why not try to you know get as many levels as I can? What's can your screen Crush? time at? Um, I got embarrassed by it, so I turned it off. Oh my God. I like that. I hate when it shows up on my phone yeah. every week. Every Sunday, I would always see it, and I'd be more embarrassed each week. You see the percentages? More up from last week. So bad. Two and two to Luke Smith, and another foul ball. A really great at bat from the bottom man in the order. With the bases still loaded, no outs. His nickname Roadrunner because it used to be his bunt sign, but he's not looking to bunt here. A line drive to left field, and it is foul, but well hit. That was really nice. Just, you know, got his bat head out there, made sure he was in front of the ball, and drove it that way. Just a little bit foul, got to straighten it out. That is now four fouls in a row. Excuse me, five fouls in a row. And this is bat alone from Luke Smith. I'm not really sure what the coaches said to this Oregon team, but they their body language has changed since they've been on defense. Yes, they did. Unfortunately, that great at bat will not end with an appearance on base as he's going to strike out swinging. A much needed strikeout for Deval. One down now with the bases loaded and the top of the order coming up. Ellis Bain grounded out to first last time, looking to make something happen this time. Bases loaded, one out. His special talent, grilling steak. He's allowed to grill steaks with parental supervision, but he does it alone. Can he grill the pitch here and hit one and, and really get Oregon back in this game? Let's take a look at the umpire camera now. See the view from down there on the 0-1 count. High and up. One and one. You have to imagine if you're the catcher and you look back and see that bug-like thing on the top of his helmet, you're going to start laughing. Like, I just lose my mind. Ball. Not blocked up well, but the runners will stay where they are as the catcher gets there in time. Tyler Chauvet to make sure no damage is done. Base is still loaded. Two balls and a strike to Bain. There you go, instincts, go get them. All right, here we go. You see the words from the dugout. Here's the pitch, ball. and it's called ball three. If he walks him, three it one. would score a run with the bases loaded. And there is the energy you guys were alluding to. The chance, they're there. They're acting like they're up seven, not down seven. 3-1 pitch, and that is strike two, the count full. 3-2. That was a pitch with a 3-1 count. I totally agree with what he did. He didn't swing at it. It was high and inside. Still called a strike, but if you have a 3-1 count, you want to get your pitch, and if it's not there, leave it up. The payoff pitch on the way, and he gets him looking. Bottom third of his own, and a beauty on his 50th pitch, Mason DeVale. And that's a way to rebound right there. You got the bases loaded, the run scores, and then you get two strikeouts in a row. How does that feel, Monet? Feels great. You know, you, you have bases loaded with no outs. Like, I feel like that's so much pressure for such a young kid. And to only give up one run in that situation, it just has to feel amazing. Go. Chase Kelly takes strike one. Bases still loaded, but it went from no outs to two outs as New Hampshire is working out of his jam quite well for now. Fouled and out of the stadium, 0-2. From Chase Kelly. Batting second and playing first tonight, not pitching. The 0-2 pitch, another foul ball. The left field and two the netting. 
a really, really good foul there, protecting the plate. I mean, that's one of the first things they teach you when you have two strikes. You'll always hear that. Protect the plate, swing at anything close. The strike zone expands when there's two. And just keeping himself alive, keeping this Oregon team alive, and trying to get some runs. This is grounded to third. He bobbles it, though, and the throw to first will not be there. Run scores for Oregon, and coming in, number five, Jacoby Acevedo. That's going to be the first error of the game, bobbled at third. I don't know if maybe it's the lights, or maybe it's some chemical going on down on the field, but it looks like these players are just a little off balance with everything going on. First it was Oregon in the field having some issues, and now New Hampshire. Excuse me, that was Ezra Carlton who scored, Carlton who scored the run. The ball hit from Chase Kelly. This one is a fly ball to right field and the play is made by Rice and Michaud, no! He loses it in the lights and the run will score for Cole Sturgeon and the bad throw to home plate will score another. Two-run score, and that one is Chase Kelly. Monet, we talked about how errors are infectious. You see it right there. Yeah, I, I do believe Robertson could have possibly been on third. He kind of looked at the, the ball once he hit it, and once it dropped, then he really started running. But, you know, it's cleared the bases, so, you know, they're back in this game, really. And you could hear it from the coach's mic. Don't go, don't go, don't go. And then the bad throw. Go, 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 go. It's just such a split. Second decision. Oregon this inning managed to cut the score over in half, only down three now. A very manageable comeback to me. Back to back E9s committed from the New Hampshire defense. There's the ball. Two errors in this inning. And a five run inning for Oregon. They get right back in it. And you got to take a look at the pitch count here. I mean, we're only in the second inning, bottom of the second, but still only the second. And both pitchers are basically around 60. Ethan Euchre with a ball popped up to second, and no play made at second. But the runner at third, Ben Robertson, will stay at the hot corner. So first and second with two outs. What a two-out rally from Oregon. And that's why you run when you're the second baseman. When, when you're on second or any base for that matter and you have two outs, you go. Because if something like that happens, you get to the next base. Now they have corners on and a, runner, and a hitter up. Do we think it's the lights that are blinding these infielders and outfielders right now for New Hampshire or is it something else? I'm not quite sure. It kind of looked like he tripped before trying to catch the ball, but then you could also see that the first baseman also went for it too. So I'm not sure if it was little miscommunication or if you just you know tripped over something that was an e4 on keith townsend also this new hampshire team is at a bit of a hiatus before playing the last game they played was saturday through the hole in the right field make it six runs in this inning for oregon ben robertson comes in on the rbi single and because of that hiatus, they might not be used to the lights, obviously practicing, but not practicing at 8, 9 o'clock at night. So those lights getting in the eyes just a little bit. Unbelievable stuff. Three, now four errors and three hits, and it's just a two-run game. Oregon left for dead after one and a half, down 8 nothing, And now, in a blink of an eye, 8-6. Oregon, during the Little League World Series, has only been averaging four runs per game. Already past that with not even a third into the game. Jackson Kaler at the plate, swing and a miss, 0-2. Oh and, and look at the pitch count right now, Monet. Yeah, oh, I mean, exactly what Oregon did. They came into this inning, down eight runs, and they were staying positive. So if you stay positive throughout the game, anything can happen. Just like you said, pitch count, they're seeing pitches, you know? The first three batters of this inning, they all walked, you know? deep in the count. It was about, I think, full count for at least two of them. So they're seeing pitches, they're being patient, and they're finding oh. the right ones to drive to score these runs. And pitch selection is so important. I mean, it's the difference between putting these six runs up and having some of those errors not be errors and being out of this inning. 
First and second, two outs, and another one fouled backward and near the boot. A ball thought, and two strikes. Thought we were gonna get a little bit of a shot at that one. Monet, if a ball comes flying at us, it's your job to block it. <laughs> I got you. All okay. right. The one-two pitch oh. on the outside corner. No strike call, two and two. Oregon looking for more. The go-ahead run at the plate. And who thought we'd be saying that anytime soon? Maybe later in the game, but not now. Fly ball to right field. And finally, out number three for New Hampshire, and it comes from Ryzen Misho. A whole new ball game after the bottom of the second, but New Hampshire still leads 8-6. Hey, all new ball game here, boys. Hey, hey, we have to make plays in the field. We have to make plays, right? Stay focused, all right? Guys, hey, let's get it back right here. We're good. We got the top of the order up, right? We're good. Hey, let's, let's do what we did the last two innings. Let's put another six up right here. New Hampshire on three on me. One, two, three. Yes, sir. Let's go. Eight to six, your score in the top of the third from Lomity in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. It's just been an absolutely wild game. Ten hits from New Hampshire, only three from Oregon, but four errors committed in the bottom of the second from New Hampshire, and it's just a two-run game. I don't know if I'd call it wild, maybe messy. It's just there's a lot going on. That was a very, very long inning. We're only in the third, and one of the and New Hampshire is above 70 pitches. New pitcher in the game now for Oregon. It's Ethan Euchre. As we mentioned before, a big fan of Russell Wilson. Also plays football and basketball. And a pinch hitter in the game, Timmy Evans. He's going to ground the short, and he is out. Finally, some defense being played. A nice solid play there, getting in front of the ball, keeping that glove down, just relying on your mechanics. In big moments like these, that's all you have to fall back on. Uh-oh. Thanks around. for the monitor. I got a, got a bit of a heads up to dugouts here. Hey, dugout. Dugout, you're back for more, even after my horrible driving. And my not-so-impressive bottom of the second either. Ball. The pitch from Euchre is ball one. As Dugout has now joined the broadcast booth. Dugout, you want a mic? <laughs> you want a mic? Will you talk? He's more of a lead a by example no? kind All of right. guy. Strike. Ball and a strike. And here's the fourth member of our crew, unfortunately. Maybe the fifth member of our crew. Haley is still heavily involved in this broadcast, but we did not plan for you. <laughs> but we'll take it. Because you bring, you bring it. You just bring it. <laughs> So again, Ethan Euchre, the new pitcher Dugout on the knows. bump Dugout for, knows. for Oregon. Did you eat any good food? We just got some candy up here in the booth. We've been waiting to break it open. So. Are you going to offer him any? Do you want some? <laughs> I don't know. Can you fit it, like, in, the, in there? Yeah? Will the hands hold it? All right. All right. I'll open it up. I'll open it up. Back to the top of the order with Dom LeBranch for New Hampshire. I know Dugout Three and some, one count to him. That guy has some dance moves. Can I see Mo some dance moves? All four. Okay. And he's going to work out a walk it? with a backflip. Dug out some food? No, um, dug out, dug out candy, dug out candy. I'm all right. Hyper dug out candy, candy, candy. Let's do it. Got to give it. There you go. Nice, nice. <laughs> very, very nice. Dug out still with <laughs> us here in the top of the third. And Mason, good old Mason Duvall back to the plate. A two-run homer Ball. in the top of the first. He's already thrown 70 pitches as well. Could his night be over after two innings? Swing and a miss. One and one. Dugout, if these pitch counts stay so high, I think you might have to jump out there and pitch. Are you prepared for that? You got it? BP pitcher? Stretching. He's getting ready. The 1-1 one, one on the way, popped up to right center, and it's going to drop in for a base hit. And he's going the second and the other to third. Two runners in scoring position now for New Hampshire. LeBranch to third and Duvall to second. 
It looks like hitting has just caught fire, and these these like runs and hits on base haven't even been because of errors. It's just because of really good hitting. Oregon brought the new pitcher in, and you know balls aren't flying out of the ballpark just yet, but the loose zeros are coming up, so you never know what can happen. And the ball now three for three on the night. Grounded to second, throw made to first, but the run will score. Dom LaBranch is going to come in to home plate, and it's 9-6 after the RBI ground out and that's from what, Tristan Lucier. That's what we call a productive out. Tristan may not have gotten on base, but he got that ribby, and he moved the runner. Dug Bye, out. Dug out. It was an honor. We, we hope will see to see soon. more of you. If you want more candy, we'll be here all day. Throw to third. Excuse me, throw to first. In time, run will not score. Runner stranded on third. Nine six after two and a half from Lomity. We would like to extend a special thank you to its official sponsors like Lance Sandwich Crackers and T-Mobile, who help to maintain the strength and leadership of the Little League program. Little League would also like to thank its dedicated volunteers who make the program a special one for millions of children. Bottom of the third, and we still see Duvall on the mound, on, even after it. now 71 pitches through two innings. He's only allowed to throw 75, can start a batter at 75, but he definitely can't last the whole inning. 85, sorry, not 75. Here we go. Leading off this inning for Oregon is Cal Vandehey. Two. Coming off the bench. No balls, two strikes to him. No on, no out. 0-2 on the way, and fouled away. And just a completely different ball game than we had just a couple of innings ago. Both teams put up six runs apiece in the second inning. Have you seen offense like this from the Little League World Series, Monet, when you were playing? Uh, the line to the pitcher and the throw to first, not in time. And that is a nice leadoff hit for Vandehey. So before we get to Monet's answer, let's send it down to Haley. So Nate Cook, thank you, Ian. Nate Cook is actually moving to Connecticut at the conclusion of their series. I spoke with his dad earlier, and he said whether they win or lose, this is still a fairy tale story because he's still playing with the kids he grew up with, and that's what it's all about. Ian, back to you in the booth. I miss you guys. We miss you too, Haley, but we hear you. And you're doing great work as always. Haley, you should come visit us at some point, like dugout. We have some welches and sour patch if you want any. Are you kidding me? I was so jealous when I saw dugout out there. By the way, oh. are we still trying to figure out what kind of animal he is? Is that I'm still not, like up that in the guy, air? That is up to you guys. I think. Well, we. Asked oh, I thought he was a hamster yesterday, and I think they said she was a hamster. Is what I heard. No, no, no. I'm, I you know. Think it just came or to you me. Know. Isn't he a squirrel? He's ball. a squirrel. I thought some I something thought that in the was family. A Okay, something in that family. Two balls and a strike to the soon-to-be Connecticut resident, Nate Cook. You see dugout space everywhere, but maybe it'll just remain a mystery. Something in the squirrel chipmunk family, I would have to think. And Nate's father is actually the CMO for the WNBA. So a very big role in the sports world he plays. The full count to him now. No one is a bigger fan of WNBA than Monet. <laughs> yeah, I love watching women's sports, whether it's WNBA or even in WSL. I was actually just talking about this with you earlier. Yeah. I was trying to get up to the game tomorrow in New York, so hopefully I can make it. Um, that would be a nice little, little treat before I go back to school. That it would. Nate Cook goes down on strike, swinging. And here comes the pinch hitter, Ryan Warhawk. Do you have a favorite Warhawk. team, Monet? Favorite team? Nah, I just like I like a bunch of players. Gotcha. He's just an overall fan. Yeah, hopefully, you know, Philly gets a team, then I'll be a Phillies fan. All right. Or whatever I think their you name should will be buy called. into a Phillies team. Like, I think you should be an owner. Oh. I mean, 
honestly, that's the goal later on in the future. But okay. oh. I don't know. I don't know. Right right now, I, I just want to finish school and you know, do what I want to do right now. And then later on down the line. Is it in like a 15-year plan? 15, for sure. Okay, yes. okay. Yes. If you could have an ownership stake in any of the Philadelphia sports teams, if you had to pick one, do you know which one it would be? I would choose the Sixers, honestly. Mm. They're doing well. Um, I feel like they have a core core group that are, you know, be there out. for a while. And with Joel and Bede, you know, re-signing. Mm. So I think I'd probably choose the Sixers. Trust the process. And look at this. Ryan Warhank's mother is behind the pole in the back of the shot. She can't watch. It's so nerve-wracking. But her son is fighting on the 0-2 count. I love when the parents are more stressed out than the kids. And I know we were talking to our parents, and they were saying the same thing. They're like, we were more stressed out than you guys were during the broadcast. I think that's a universal experience for parents. There she is. And he's going to get hit by pitch. No, he knocks out of the way. And the runner takes second as the wild pitch goes to the backstop. Runner on second, one out. What do you think is scarier for his mom, seeing him get pegged by a ball or seeing him strike out? I, I feel like. I'm not a parent, obviously, but like, you know, watching my friends, I feel like I'd rather see them get hit by a pitch and get on base than striking out. I'd rather see them, you know, excited to be on base and, you know, walking around sad. Monet would rather her friends get serious bruises than <laughs> strike <Sure>. out. <laughs> Oregon still trails three. Runner on second, one out. Warhang checks go. his swing, and they're going to say he went strikeout for Duvall, his fifth of the evening. And Oregon in this game, but still frustrated at that result. Duvall up there in pitches, and we're going to see a pitching change here after the strikeout has pitched well all night. And let's get a listen to this mound hey. visit. Way to go get that last batter. Good job. Good job. All right, we got two outs, guys, right? Uh, Jacoby! You're going out to center. You're going to short. Hey, great job. All right. You got to take all that off. We'll be right back with the new pitcher There's on the bump for New Hampshire in just a few. They're still up three. T-Mobile is going to bat for Little League to help more kids play ball. The T-Mobile Little League call-up grant has raised over $3.5 million to cover registration fees, helping over 17,000 kids in counting play America's game. Pitching change for New Hampshire. But before we do that, no, we're going to go right to the new pitcher on the mound. It is Jacoby Acevedo, who started the game in center field. Mason Duvall now moving from pitcher to short, and Tristan Lucier from short to center field. Now let's go to our Tuesday night baseball Looksy, it's Dodgers taking on Fernando Tatis and the Padres. Our coverage begins at 10 Eastern from Petco on ESPN and the app. One app, one tap. We see Tristan moving from shortstop to center, as you mentioned. King of the infield to king of the outfield. Not sure if anyone can see this, but if you look at the outfield, the right fielder is in right center. And that just shows that, you know, maybe Jacoby doesn't throw as hard and they believe that every bat is going to be early. But, you know, if someone puts one down the right field line, that could possibly give up a lot of bases. That it could. Swing and a miss makes the count 0-2 to Ellis Bain. The new pitcher, Jacoby Acevedo, he just started BMX biking. He got into it because his dad does a lot of downhill mountain biking. I don't know about you guys, but I don't have the gut for that as he is going to end the inning striking out swinging is Ellis Bain. Great work from Acevedo as he keeps the New Hampshire lead at three after three. Oh, okay. I think I got this. Step one, you have to lift up the phone. Uh-oh. I don't even know how this works. You don't want to take this off first. I believe. First, <laughs> put it on the five. 
I think. You just twist it. But how do you get it to set the number? You just spit. I don't know how to use it. <laughs> you want to trade uh, your cell phone in for one of those? No. Top four from Lomity in the Little League World Series. An elimination game between New Hampshire and Oregon. And New Hampshire with the three-run lead, nine to six. Oh, this generation, don't we love our technology? Okay. It can be used to take photos, but also it can be very distracting. <laughs> to be honest, I don't think I could use that phone to save my life. Like, I think if I was in a place where I needed to use that phone to call 911, I, I would die. Because, like, I, oh. I just don't think I, I don't think I could do it. <laughs> I think I could. You just turn to the number. I think you reset it. Turn back. What does resetting mean? Just let it go. Just let it turn back around. Well, Monet, you've been in the high-pressure situation before. <laughs> you're on. You're on. You're she's, cool. I you're think cool. she's cool, calm, and collected. <laughs> cool, I think cool, we're all yeah. smart enough to figure out how that phone can work. Fair enough. Leading off this inning, Keith Townsend. That pitch right at him, ducks out of the way for ball one. Now, Zoe, you'll like this story. Townsend was supposed to be in Hawaii if the team did not advance to Williamsport. Well, that makes two of us. And you um, were supposed to be two, but the kids cast called. I know. That makes two of us. I mean, as nice as it would be to, in Hawaii, it's nice to be here on a sticky, humid night, isn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Come on. Kidding. You remember those shots earlier? No, it's beautiful yeah. here. No, it's beautiful here. I'm so excited to be here. And, you know, Hawaii can wait. Plus, there's a bunch okay. of mass bands and stuff going on there. So mm. I think we're both glad to be here. Yep, unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic still very much with us. And it's affected oh. Williamsport this year. No international teams, but still a great competition. Okay as we're trying to whittle it down to eight teams after this game tonight. Here's the pitch and fouled out of the stadium. Two and two count to Keith Townsend. Townsend's also second cousins with actor Brecken Meyer. Oh. And he makes the count full on the outside pitch, who's known for his work in clues and road trip and Garfield the movie, which a lot of these kids probably saw not too long ago. Famous blood in the family. The payoff oh, pitch, and it comes for a walk. Let's send it down to Haley Galindo, who's got something for us. What is up, you guys? So I'm on the hill right now, but forget about that. I have the swag wagon with me. You guys, I spoke to Julie earlier, and she let me borrow it. Thank you, Julie, if you're watching this. I'll take care of your baby for you. Probably pop some wheelies on it. I don't know. Okay, so, but let's check it out, okay? So, look at the rims. Are you kidding me? Look at those rims, the detail in the rims. Oh, my gosh. And then you got to go to the lights, the gloves. Are you kidding me? That's genius. Don't forget about the ball cap. That's awesome. Like, who even thought of that, right? Okay, so, we get around here, but the real party is inside. Guys, check it out. The disco ball. Zo, Ian, Monet, is this not super cool? Look at the disco ball over here. We have two because one's not enough, right? So we're going to take this for a ride. If I stink at driving this, I swear I have my license, but this thing's really hard to drive. Also, I had to reverse earlier. This thing doesn't have a camera. So, Julie, maybe we should work on that, maybe? I don't know. All righty. Ready, guys? We're going to start driving. Here we go. I'm scared. I'm scared a little well, bit. Well, what a lie. great play from Crew Corey. Good luck, Haley, in the swagon. Crew Corey with an excellent play. Monet at shortstop to get the runner out at second. Talk you know, to us about that. He had a few mental mistakes earlier. You know, he made a few mistakes back to back. But, you know, he just stole a hit from that kid mm. and got the out at second. That is brilliant from him. That is a way to keep his team, you know, in this game. And, you know, it's just, it's a highlight, honestly. Maybe the play was a little bit too good, as it looks like we're going to see a coach's challenge from manager Chris Kelly and, or excuse me, manager Tim Duvall and New Hampshire. Usually when someone's turning a double play, sometimes even if the person who's catching the ball on second isn't directly on the base, they'll give it to you if you're in proximity just for safety reasons because obviously if you're in front of second base when a runner slides in, it can be an issue. But I think for this one, they're really going to be focusing on if he was actually on the bag because he didn't make any attempt to turn the double play. 
It also kind of looked like when he stretched, his foot might have slid off the base, but I'm not sure if it came off after he caught it. Little humans, little legs, you know, mm. can't help it. And Corey, Looks he's... like he got it. Corey's already seen enough heartbreak this month. He's a big FC Barcelona fan, and he was pretty devastated when Lionel Messi left the team, and hopefully something goes right for him here, and the call is not overturned. As we'll get another look. Looks like that left foot dragged on the bag before we saw Keith Townsend sliding in. A great angle, too. So we should get the right call. If it holds, it will be a fielder's choice. And Ryson Misho on first. And currently no runner on second in the top of the fourth from Lomedy. Another so angle. Really taking time to make this call. This is one of the toughies where, you know, in a close game, three runs close enough, it could really decide something. And, you know, it could be the difference between one out, two out, end of the inning, and continuing on. These are the few plays in the game. We've seen plenty of wild plays so far that can really, maybe in the moment, not seem like a massive call, but could definitely turn the tide of this game. Again, the call on the field is keep Townsend out at second base. Thanks of a great throw from short from Crew Corey. Still being reviewed, so looks like it was more up in the air than we seemed. Close calls like this, sometimes there's not enough evidence to overturn them. So that mm -hmm. could be what they're looking for. Is there enough for them to really believe that he was off the bag, or do they give it to him for proximity? And the call is, in fact, overturned, and Oregon is stunned. Townsend returns to second. And it's going to go down as a base hit for Ryzen Misho. To well, hit of the day. And made the right call. Still doesn't take away from the fact that, you know, uh, that Corey, Crew Corey, sorry, got to that ball. Still amazing play. Great coach's challenge from Tim Duvall. Here's Tyler Chauvet. Righty on righty matchup between him and Euchre. Euchre deals at his chest, ball one. First and second, no outs. New Hampshire going to add some insurance to its three-run lead. one -oh on the way, and show that inside corner. Euchre gets it, one and one. Euchre doing a really good job of staying on the outside of the plate. Obviously, in a situation like this, no outs, runners on first and second. Got to keep that ball away from the home run fence. Show that with a bouncer to short. Corey is second. There's one out in the double play. Not turn the throw away go, 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 go. from Kelly's hands. And the run will score for New Hampshire. Coming in is Keith Townsend. And that's their 10th run of the game. 10-6 them. The run scores, but they get a productive out at least. They get that out. The run still scores. And, you know, runner on first. I was surprised he didn't go to second, but... Now, at least it cleared the bases a little bit. You reset, go up. It's just one more run. It's not that big a deal. Trying to pull off a double play in Monet. That throw nowhere close to Chase Kelly on first. I thought Crew Corey was going to actually go to third for that one, but, you know, he just, he almost got the double, the double play. Just, you know, bad throw to first base, but it's all right. It's time to shake it off, and you can turn one right now. I like the gutsiness of trying to turn the double play. In a situation like this, you want to turn it. You want to help get out of this inning as fast as possible. Callan Murphy now pinch running at first, right to the shortstop after a bounce from the pitcher, and no double play. Closer runner in the safe last one, and throw was on point. Nothing more you can ask for there. Just a fast runner who beat it out. And that runner was Braden Connolly who whacked that one right up the middle to the pitcher, Euchre, deflected off of his glove to Corey, who turned to second. And then Sturgeon on second to Kelly, but not in time at first base. Let's get another look at that umpire camera, getting a look at this at bat. 27 pitches in now for Ethan Euchre. Grounded foul down the left field line from Jacoby Acevedo. That sounded like it may have hit the bat twice. Did any of you hear that, or was that just me? All right, I must be hallucinating and hearing things. Never mind, then. Well, I saw a wild play on TikTok today where a batter broke his bat, but it hit the bat three times. 
while the bat was being broken. Couldn't do that again if he tried. No. I don't think, no offense to the Little Leaguers, I don't think they have that kind of power. This one aligned to Euchre. He recollects himself, and he outmade it first by Chase Kelly. New Hampshire extends their lead by one. And let's get a look at what's going on at the Hill right now. They are just rolling down, having fun from Lomity. All right, quiet on set. Hi, my name is Kai Carlson, and my favorite food is Beck. Oh my god. I forgot, okay, I forgot what I was gonna say. You're killing me, Smalls. Me, I'm the ping pong champion. I got the best flow on the team. Right, one more time. What? Oh, the kids, even when they are not perfect when talking, they just find a way to be funny. 10-6 year score here in the bottom of the fourth. New Hampshire in the lead. In this game already, through three and a half innings, guys, the highest scoring game we have seen yet from the 2021 Little League World Series. 16 hits combined between the two teams. 12 for New Hampshire, four for Oregon. Already this game has eclipsed the highest scoring mark, scoring one run more overall than the New Jersey-Connecticut battle. First. And that's called strike one to make the count two and one. Just think about that though. Four hits scored six runs. Wow. Chase Kelly, the leadoff batter for Oregon. 0 for two so far tonight. And 0 for six so far in the Little League World Series. Acevedo Four. deals. And missing low, three and one. Acevedo, he's going to feel pretty good right now, Monet, with that four run lead and so much run support. But that's a well hit ball to right field in between the infield and outfield and a leadoff single for Chase Kelly. Finally, he gets a hit. Instead, you have the end cap. As you mentioned, Ian right. finally gets that hit. Hey, got, got on, on an sorry, error last time, ended up scoring here, the run, right? and struck Pretty. out his first time up. That's a way to rebound. Monet, what are we seeing here? Just the ball's inside, and he just gets his hands through. Gets the barrel there and just drives it in. I mean, it might not be the hardest hit, but you know, it's, it still counts as a, hook, a hit in the book. Pitcher on pitcher matchup between Jacoby Acevedo and Ben Robertson, who fouls one back, and it just go, gets the top of the backstop. 0-1. Oh Runner on first, no outs. Oregon looking to close the gap once again. In this elimination game. We've still got three full innings of this Oregon offense. There's a fly ball in foul territory and there out you of go. play. There you go. So Come Monet, on. do you feel like the Oregon players right now are feeling the pressure to score? Or do you think the coaching staff is reiterating that they have time to make up the deficit. I mean, I would, I would, if I were the coach, I would still say you have time. I mean, it's bottom four. You know, they scored six in one inning. There's no reason to try to, you know, just, you know, pound balls out and try to get doubles and home runs every time. It's just one base at a time. You saw this this New Hampshire team make some errors. So if you just put the ball in play, hit the ball hard, good things should happen. Robertson with the foul out, and that will bring up the cleanup hitter. And now pitching for Oregon, Ethan Euchre. Fouls one back, 0-1. Runner on first, one out. Euchre a big card collector. Just like many kids these days. You know, you got guys like Gary V telling you you could you know, do it not only as a side hustle, but make a big living off of it. And are you two big card collectors? When I was little, I used to be a huge baseball card kid. Mm. Like, I had binders and binders sorted by team and year. It was like my favorite thing ever. I think, then I realized they weren't as valuable as I thought they were, because uh -oh. I'd realized only the really old ones were valuable. Yep. But I went to Cooperstown one time and got one of those packages from like 1981, thought it was like the coolest person ever, but then got like nobody, so then I was just sad and stopped. I do not collect cards. I like to, I like to collect quarters though, with from different states. 
Have, have you gotten all there. 50? Um, I'm, I don't think so, actually. I have a lot, but I don't think I have all 50 yet. Gotta get some soon. See some pins there. That's a big thing at the Little League World Series here. I know we've been talking about my best pin, my Duncan pin, obviously. I think it's literally the coolest thing that's ever happened. Shows bunt and lays down a beauty base hit for Drew Corey. After the fly out from Ethan Euchre, a two out base hit for him. And this is just fundamentals at its finest, Monet. That's just a perfect bunt. There's nothing any defense could do about that. Nope. You know, just place it nicely. And he saw that the third baseman was back, as we were talking about earlier, and just gives, gives himself a base hit. And he advances through Corey as well. Especially on a field like this where you got to remember, the bases are only 60 feet apart. They're pretty close. So maybe in a major league setting, that bunt would have, the runner would have gotten out. Oh. But here it works because it's so short and they can get down the baseline so quick. Jackson Kaler at the plate with runners on first and second and two outs. Kaler 0 for 1 tonight. And there is strike one. Jacoby Acevedo looking to get out of the jam. He deals. Did he go? And did he go? No, he did not. He goes ahead in the count two and one. Monet, we were talking about all 50 states for your quarters. But did you know that Jackson Keeler can list all 50 states in order in less than 30 seconds? I mean, I can do it. Yeah, I learned in third grade in Jackson. alphabetical order, but I don't know about 30 seconds. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, I was going to say, if you said in under 30 seconds, <laughs> he, gets out his, he gets out his timer. I was saying, let's do it right now. I don't know if I can do it in 30 oh, seconds. Oh, so first you can, now you can't. When are the we, pressure's we on, we she have steps the timer. In. All right, we started. Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, North Dakota. Uh, I don't want for I messed up. Oh, oh no. I would have gotten it. I was close. You were making I gotten great it. time. I would have gotten it. I would have gotten it. I got to maybe, maybe next half inning. Next half inning, maybe. But uh, I'm oh. so close. Oh. Monet still oh. got it. And that is so a long. walk for Jackson Kaler. Bases loaded for oh, Oregon with two outs. And the tying run will come to the plate. It's Beckett Hare looking to do some damage. Oregon already with two hits this inning. And six total on the evening. Monet, I really thought you had it there for a second. And then I just heard some weird noises. Yeah. And it just fell apart. I don't know what happened. I was I looked at the time and I was like, oh, I got this easily. And then I just forgot. She didn't got it. Here's the pitch upstairs, collected by the catcher. One and one. Good snag from Tyler Chauvet. Hey. And let's listen so, in. So just take a deep breath. All right. So you've been hitting so well all week, okay? Short to the ball. Just stay middle, short to the ball, okay? Don't try to be too big. Just go get it. You're a great hitter, okay? Have fun. Okay, go get it. Visualize success. Go get it. Really inspiring words there. Trying to light a fire in hair with the bases loaded Four, two. and two outs. Acevedo deals on the 1-1. Swing and a miss. One and two. Monet, how much of an impact does it have when your coach comes over and really just Ice supports ball, you like it. that? You're a good hitter. It just gives you confidence. If, you're, if you see that your coach believes in you, it gives you that extra boost that you should believe in yourself. And he goes down swinging. Acevedo picks up a critical strikeout with the bases loaded, and his team still leads by four. I mean, at first he wasn't that comfortable, but he seems to be enjoying himself here. First he was saying in interviews, the main thing is the main thing, and <laughs> now the camera's his best friend. Hey, you know, it's that confidence you were talking about, Monet. It's all about the confidence. Dom LeBranch leading off, showing Stop. bunt, pulling it back, and that is strike one. This, Le this is the top of the order here for New Hampshire. So mm -hmm. we're going to see them try to do something and extend that lead. They're up four currently. 
LeBranch one for one today, three for six during the Little League World Series so far, and swing and a miss now behind one and two. LeBranch, his favorite actor is Adam Sandler, and a lot of kids' his favorite actor is Adam Sandler, but the famous actor is following this team very closely. Grounded to third, routine throw to first, one away. Let's get a look at how Adam Sandler, who used to play with this Little League, said on Twitter, North Hooks at Manchester Little League are now the New England champs. Holy cow. Next stop, Williamsport. Me and my whole team are pulling for you. And right in the middle of the front row is a young future Hollywood star. Hopefully you're watching tonight, Adam. Or at least find out the result of this one. Second straight ground out. That one of the shortstop, Corey, and it will retire Mason the ball. We've seen some really good hair from some of the people, but Adam Sandler's hair there right there was pretty fun. If he made it to the Little League World Series, he certainly would be in the conversation for the greatest oh, yeah. hairdo of all time. I know the other day we had a little bit of a hair off on the field. I wish we had seen that. Euchre deals, and that's ball one. Ian, going back to Adam Sandler, you have a couple Adam Sandler fans here. New Hampshire second baseman oh. Keith. I just got done talking to his parents, and he actually loves Adam Sandler. His favorite movie is Grown Ups, and I honestly love that so much because Grown Ups is so funny. I've seen that movie so many times. Certainly one of the best. And Lucy rips one the right. Getting it past Cole Sturgeon for a base hit. A now really, three for four today with a homer, four ribbies. A really good dive there by the second baseman, though. I mean, there's nothing more you can do. He looks like he's beating himself up a little bit, but he was right there. It was just a couple inches too far, and there's nothing he can do. He fully extended, had that glove out. The ball was just hit too hard. Monet, the top of the order, is still here in the top of the fifth, getting it done for New Hampshire. I mean, just look at the scoreboard. They score at least one each inning, but at top of the order, they've really set the tone for this for this game, and you know, they're not backing down, considering the six runs that they gave up in the second inning. And here's his twin, Kalen with the beam to right field, and it will carry over the fence. Oh. The Lucier twins dominating start. from start. Williamsport, tacking on two Touch more home. runs. Unbelievable. Kalen and Tristan score. 14th hit of the night for New Hampshire. And a ginger. So <laughs> we found a ginger. We finally found a ginger. Monet, what do you see here? Looks like another breaking ball that just drops right in the wheelhouse for him, and he just turns on it, gets, gets the bear out front, and just, just launches it to right field. And the Twins tonight, as we get the 360 shot of the blast, are five for eight, two homers, and six RBIs. They have batted in half of New Hampshire's 12 runs. And right field is becoming their best friend. <laughs> I mean, they've hit it all over the park today. One to left, one to right, they're everywhere. So for the twin brothers, I was speaking with their mom earlier, both of them with home runs. I mean, complete shots. Actually, Tristan is older by two minutes. Just by two minutes, he's huh. the oldest. Well, you wouldn't be able to tell, Haley, who's more productive. They're both equally productive, so the two minutes don't matter. The production matters. Even the kid, even their kid brother, Declan, at three years old with the pacifier, knew something good was happening. Hey, he's the next one to put it over the fence. Maybe we'll see him here in eight to nine years. You could be Monet and come back in seven, and you know, see him here. Oh. Euchre's still on the bump for Oregon, and Keith Townsend in the batter's box. He's going to ground one, the second, and that's the last out of the top of the fifth. Crooked numbers in three of New Hampshire's five innings. And just all smiles and a nice looking smile on Kaylin Lucier.
World Series on ESPN is presented by T-Mobile, the leader in 5G. The Little League World Series presented by T-Mobile continues tomorrow with some more games. The winner of this game will face Ohio, New England versus Texas, California versus South Dakota, and Michigan versus Honolulu. Nebraska, sorry, in the Hank Aaron bracket. See you guys tomorrow for a whole new slate of games. Bottom of the fifth from Lomity Stadium in the 2021 Little League World Series. Jacoby Acevedo still on the mound for New Hampshire. Ball, showing ball. bunt and fouling it off. Cole Sturgeon. Twelve to six for score. As New Hampshire now has put up crooked numbers in the first, second, and fifth innings, and they've scored every single inning at least one run. Already the highest scoring game so far this year in the Little League World Series. And a whip to make it 0-2. Good swing there. Looked like he just pulled his head out a little bit, trying to rip the ball. It's really important for Oregon right now to just get on base. Ball. Breaks off the plate, and he's awarded ball one. And Sturgeon. He is a super athlete, not only a great baseball player here, as we'll see what he does on the one, two, take ball two, but he's also recently taken up fencing. Yes, that is the same kid. And he could take any of us out. Just such an interesting sport for a kid so young to pick up. There you go. Two and two, the count. I wouldn't want to be anywhere near someone with one of those fencing poles. No. And I'm curious, Monet, I know that you play softball, you've played baseball, you love basketball as well, you play basketball. Is there any other sports you've tried over the years? That I played soccer growing up. Played yeah. soccer? Played soccer all the way up until high school. Um, actually tried lacrosse once. It wasn't... Uh -huh. How'd that go? Um, I played, I was on defense, so like, it wasn't too much going on, and yep. I just caught the ball and just threw it as far as I can down the field, which isn't the best thing, but I want to learn golf and also tennis so wow. hopefully whenever I get some free time maybe in the summer or whenever I can try to learn those. So that one not a part of the 15 year plan maybe more of the five year plan. <laughs> maybe more of just a year plan. A year okay. Plan. Maybe at Hamilton this year you'll be able to run on the tennis courts no. a little bit. No? Ham Hampton has a great tennis team and I don't want to disturb that. <laughs> Cole Sturgeon strikes out swinging. Luke Smith shows Ball. bunt. Foul down the left field line. 0-1. Oregon needing some offense. They are the, quote, home team in this game, so they will get the bottom of the sixth as well as they are looking at this six-run deficit in this elimination game. The 0-1, and really good stuff from Jacoby Acevedo. 36 pitches in now after he took over for Duvall earlier in the game. The 0-2 on the way and upstairs. He's Go Luke the Duke. <laughs> Come on, Duke. Fight. These Oregon hitters looking really comfortable with two strikes, being able to take the pitches that aren't to them, fouling off the there ones they don't like, just looking really comfortable and poised at the plate. Yeah, Monet, speaking of poise, we've seen some really strong at-bats from both sides. Guys are just finding ways to consistently keep battling behind in the count. Swing and a miss, strikeout. Why would your kids need a green light debit card? Imagine a debit card and app designed to help them develop healthy financial habits, to teach them how to save and encourage them to set their own goals. Now imagine the difference it could make in their lives, in their futures. Green light. Fourth strikeout tonight for Acevedo, but going back to that point, we've just seen some great at bats so far from both teams. Ball. And I've noticed that these three batters have showed bunk just to try to, you know, sneak base runners on, which isn't a bad idea. But hopefully, you know, after putting yourself in a hole, you can easily climb, climb back, just like you said, they're having great at-bats. And, you know, still have an inning left to try to, you know, put up runs. They already scored six in one inning, so I, I think they can do it. No on, nobody out. Pitch high and away lands for ball one. 
in order to score six runs, they'll have to get a rally started. And as we all know, two out rallies are pretty famous. Ellis Bain looks to start one here. Bain, a good take. Two one. Ahead in the count, two balls, one strike. Now over 40 pitches for Acevedo. Looking to get his third out here in the bottom of the fifth. Oh. Still cannot get that ball to drop on top of the zone, three and one. We've been talking all about sports. Ellis Bain, actually a swimmer. He likes to swim, doesn't do it competitively, but does it in his free oh. time. And that is a walk for him on the three one, and this is a wild stat about him. And the swimming is great, but Bain is actually a distant relative of a late MLB Hall of Famer, Ty Cobb, who played back all the way in the 1920s and was a great player, as I mentioned. Also, all these kids are saying they want to visit Hawaii. You know where he wants to visit? Pompeii. Just a super unique kid with a very interesting story, and a two-out walk has him on first. Chase Kelly ahead 1-0. Acevedo deals. Ball. And Monet, another one, too high. There, was, there were a lot of high pitches this, this inning. And Got some swings and some just aren't going for it. So you know, hopefully with the 2 count, he just relaxes and goes a strike and just gets himself in the groove. He can't find the groove there. Another ball issued upstairs from Acevedo. Kelly in the driver's seat. One for three tonight. He's now thrown seven balls in a row. And finally, the streak ends with a strike right down Broadway, three and one. Runner on first, two outs. Oregon still trails six. Bain on first. Three, one, outside, no, it gets the call. And the count full. Acevedo about to deal his 50th pitch. Looking for out number three. Ball. And he doesn't get it. That pitch looked to be in a similar location. Good eye. But called a ball. Extend. And Good on job. the full count, a walk. Back-to-back -back walks issued by Jacoby Acevedo. Here comes all Robertson. Right, you got two outs, all right? You got to be rolling. Mone, did you ever have that happen hey, to you where you threw the exact same pitch twice, but it was called a ball one time and a strike another? Uh, no, but I had an incident happen in Cooperstown at one of the tournaments. Um, I threw a fastball down the middle and it was called a ball, and then threw a curveball down the middle and it was also called a ball, and we ended up losing that game in the semifinals, and it was, it was a heartbreaker. But you didn't lose your cool. No, or but <laughs> I no, but I did shed some tears stop, because stop. I saw my teammates crying because oh. you know we were it was a good tournament for us. It was our last you know tournament as a travel team on the small field, so mm -hmm. I, I felt bad once I saw my teammates crying. And I just I think after the game I hugged each and every one of them and yeah. just was like, it's all right, we're gonna you know bounce back from this. Robertson lines one right through the hole in the center of the field, and the bases are loaded after the single from Banner Robertson. A two-out rally from Oregon in the bottom of the fifth. Looking to change this ball game. And the cleanup hitter, Ethan Euchre to the batter's box. Looking to tighten the six-run lead. Acevedo deals in the dirt, but really good play from the catcher, Chauvet to make sure that wasn't a wild pitch. Monet, how important is it right now for their momentum, for them to at least score one run here with two outs? It gives oh. them that boost of confidence. Like I, I keep saying confidence, but it's it's huge at this age. It's giving yourself that confidence. So even just scoring one run that you know puts puts you one step closer to being able to score five. You know, they have bases loaded right now, and they could do that next inning as well. So. Even just scoring one, that'll help them. Scoring two is even better. Um, but, you know, just coming out of this inning with a run will be huge for them. Two balls and a strike to Ethan Euchre. Bases loaded, two outs. Acevedo, pitch on the way. And it does not get the lower third of his own, three and one. 57 pitches now for Acevedo. And he did not start this game. 
Three one. Whacked foul to left field. We've seen some really good hacks that just happen to be falling foul. These boys taking advantage, the righties and the lefties, of pulling the ball and sending it as far as it can go. Oregon now up to seven hits on the game. Looking for a critical Four. eighth hit with the bases loaded. The payoff. Acevedo. Fly ball to right field. Misho has it. And getting out of a bases loaded jam is Jacoby Acevedo. 12-6 New Hampshire after five. Thanks, Mom and Dad, for always supporting me. Thank you for supporting me and giving me this opportunity to play out here in the World Game Series. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for uh, bringing me here and letting me do this and helping me along the way. They helped me be a respectful kid. I love them, and I would wish you could be here, and thank you for all your support. Top of the sixth from Williamsport and 12-6 your score, New Hampshire over Oregon at the moment. And while we're in the thankful mood, the kids casters, we want to thank the Bruce Beck Sports Broadcasting Camp and Bruce Beck specifically for helping us alongside ESPN to have this opportunity not only to call this game, but two nights ago, the MLB Little League Classic. And also thankful to producer Joe McCoy and his entire crew who has made this past week a special one for all of us involved. Ethan Euchre outside on his first pitch in the top of the sixth. Ball one to Ryzen Misho. Misho foul, one and one. New Hampshire already has a comfortable lead over Oregon, but hey, what, what is adding some more, right? What is adding some more? It's an elimination game. And Monet. You just got a tweet that confirmed which animal Dugout is. Dugout visited us in the booth earlier, visited us in the cart pregame. And what animal is it? Dugout is a gopher. And who told you that on S Twitter? Some, I don't know. They didn't really have a profile picture. But it was one of his handlers. And this one is handled quite well to right field. And it's gone. Rise in Misho, showing touch some it, more it, offense off. for New touch Hampshire, 13 to six. On the biggest stage these guys could possibly be on, that's a way to go out. What a way to do it. Just pedal to the metal. And the New Hampshire crowd is living it up. Once again, right field. And look at the reaction here. And talk about the anticipation that builds up before the ball goes over the fence, Monet. When do you truly know? I mean, I know you truly know when the ball is gone, when it obviously hits the ground. But is there a point in the trajectory where you just know, see you later? Um, sometimes people know right off the bat. Mm -hmm. You know, you can just feel it. Well, sometimes if you get off the C spot, you might not feel it. But, you know, just, you can just feel it in the swing when it's gone. Like, just, just a quick, you know, swing as soon as it gets, gets off the bat that you know it's gone. But I think he knew. I'm not sure if his parents knew, but it's a great shot by him. Tyler show that does not beat it out. It dribbled a few feet in front of him. Looked like he had a chance at that. Are they going to say he's on, though? I think he, he was thinks called he out. was on. <laughs> he thinks he was on. So they called him out at first. Let's get another look. There might be a review. Throw from Kaylor, the catcher. And what do we think? It looks like he was, was safe. safe. Yeah, that foot definitely got down before that ball entered the glove. And Chauvet still trying to catch his breath and hoping all that hard work pays off with a base hit. The call on the field is out at first, but New Hampshire is officially challenging it. The big hitter, probably not used to bunting so much, usually used for bigger situations. Well, did he bunt there? I think that was more of a swinging bunt. But swinging yeah. bunt, same thing. The still short a hit. ball, the short ball. There you go. It's still a hit in the book, so. Yeah. And he is officially safe. 
The swinging bunt paying off a one-out single for Chauvet. That's two successful challenges we've seen today. These managers doing a really good job of watching the play closely and overturning calls when they need. Everything going New Hampshire's way today outside of a six-run second inning. They are dominating. This one pops to the catcher, or excuse me, pops to the pitcher, and a throw to first is made. Friday night, it's an MLS doubleheader. We start at 6.30 with the Ohio Derby between Columbus and Cincinnati. Then, it's the battle for Florida between Orlando City and Miami. Both matches are available on ESPN Deportes and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Bottom of the order for New Hampshire with one out. It's Jacoby Acevedo. Foul, foul. Foul out of the stadium, 0-1. With the runner on second. I should say, Chauvet advanced to second after the ground out from his teammate Connolly. Two. Called strike inside, 0-2. A little bit of fielder's choice action on that play before. Acevedo, one for two tonight. One for seven so far in the Little League World Series. Gets away from the catcher. Chauvet stay up, stay up, stay up. on his horse, and he makes it to third. Originally singled, took second on the fielder's hey, choice. Base hit, you're scoring. Now on third. Hey, base hit, He's making his way around the bases. Base hit, and you're scoring as New Hampshire manager Tim Duvall wants another run. Acevedo foul again over the right field bleachers. One ball, two strikes. Top of the six in a 13 to six game in New Hampshire's favor. One, two. Ethan Euchre looks Play. on. He's now throwing 56 pitches. Started the game catching. Line foul. And how is that transition? And how is it for Little Leaguers who both pitch and catch with that kind of knowledge? I mean, I feel like going from catcher to pitcher, you, you get to know the strike zone. Um, so you get to know where you where you want to throw it, what pitches you know the umpire is going to call. But it's still pretty difficult because you're throwing just the same amount of pitches catching as you are catching the pitcher. You're throwing mm -hmm. the ball back just as much. So, you know, it could be a strain on some arms, but he's he's been phenomenal so far for this Oregon team. Play. That he has, Euchre trying to keep it a ball game. A seven run lead for New Hampshire. One, two on the way, line to the shortstop, and that is a ground out, but an RBI ground out at that as Tyler Chauvet comes home and that's run number 14 on the day for this team. An eight-run lead, their largest of the night. What's going through Oregon's mind right now? Okay. Just got to put runs up okay. as soon as you get in. Right, get base runners. I would usually, <laughs> you know, go. say take a strike just to, you know, build this, build up the the pitch count. But just getting base runners, that's, that's key here. Dom LeBranch is going to ground out to third, and that will get us out here in the top of the sixth inning. Bottom six, and one team will be eliminated. Who will it be? We'll see you after the break. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the Little League World Series, presented by T-Mobile. Let's listen to the Oregon dug out between innings and what the message was. If there's ever a time to do a snowman, it's now. Okay? Yeah. It can be done. Okay? Do you guys believe it can be done? Yeah. If we believe it, we can do it. All right? We're not going to give up. We're going to fight this whole inning through. Do you guys understand? Let's go. All right? 
Let's go out. Let's do everything that we can to win this game. You guys can do it. All right, here we go. Let's go. LO on three. One, two, three. Oh. LO. One at a time, guys. And that is definitely the mentality you got to have. That was third base coach Tony Sturgeon, the father of Cole, giving that message to his team here in the bottom of the sixth. Now we have a great stat for you here. The last Ball. time a team had four home runs in a game in the Little League World Series, 2017, four years ago, when South Korea hit four against the Dominican Republic. Unfortunately, oh. we were not able to see any international teams this season due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Hopefully they will be back soon enough and hopefully it is 2022. Crew Corey at the plate and he's ahead 3-0. And ducks out of the way for ball four for number four, a leadoff walk. That's a way to start it off. How does that help the momentum there, Monet? You always want to get the leadoff batter on, whether it's a walk, a single, whatever. You always just want to get the leadoff batter on, and so just go from here. You know, you can either bunt them over or just let, let these kids play and let them hit. Jackson Kaler, number eight, steps up in the batter's box with a runner out first and no outs. Oregon needs eight runs to bring it to extras. And if they score more than that, then they would win here in the bottom of the sixth. It's a long shot. But possible, as Coach Sturgeon said to his team in between innings. Ball. The 0-1 lands in for strike one. 64 pitches now for Jacoby Acevedo. You think they'll let him stay in and finish the game? I think it depends. Depends how many runs or if they score it, as many runs. Popped up to right center and Tristan Lucier makes the play. Two outs away from advancing is New Hampshire. Fly out from Kayla. Now batting Beckett Hayer. Number 14 with a runner on first and one out. Acevedo deals below ball one. Hayer 0 for 1 today with a walk and a run scored 0 for 4 so far in the Little League World Series. Nearly gets away from Chauvet, but collects it and the runner stays at first. Corey on first was ready to go. You saw him watching that. If that had gotten just a couple inches by, he would have been on second right now. And Hayer, he's an interesting kid. He says when he's not playing sports, he likes oh. to play wiffle ball. And I'm in a wiffle ball league, yeah. and last time I checked, wiffle ball is a sport. So this guy is just sports 24-7, I guess. He's basically you. Well, I wouldn't say that. He's got more guts than me. I'd be pretty scared to be up there right now. But he works a walk, or maybe that's what he thought. A called strike, three and one. Monet, have you ever had that happen to you where you either think, either you struck out or you thought you walked and you just walked away and they were like, nope. Nah, I usually just stay in there, whether he calls it a ball or a strike. What a bunt! And he is gonna beat it out. Oh. Right in front of home plate down, from Beckett Hayer. First and second with one out for Oregon. That was a really, really good stop by the first baseman covering there. If that had gotten by, you don't know where those runners would be right now. He even looked at how good the bunt was before he took off. Show that with the throw to Kalen Lucier but not in time. He had the speed to admire it and then get his way down the base path. We were not blessed with that speed up here. Well, Monet was. No. Monet, well, how fast would you say you are? I'm not very fast. Okay, then I'm close. I'm just, I, I like to consider myself a, a smart base runner. Ah. Uh, okay. So, so emotions are the enemy of hitting, okay? So you gotta be calm. You gotta be really calm right now, okay? All right, I want you to, I want you to lay down and drag the button down the third base line, okay? All right, so that's the message to Cole Sturgeon from his father, Tony. Lay down the bunt and advance the runners. Don't fix it if it ain't broke. Let's see what happens on the 0-1. He shows bunt. It goes down the third baseline. The runners will advance, and he is out at first. That was a beautiful bunt, though. That was pretty much as good a bunt as you can get. Right down the line, close to the line, makes everyone get off. If that doesn't scream, challenge this, please, I don't know what does. From Cole Sturgeon, did exactly what his pops told him. It works, and oh, that's such a close call. 
Did the back of his right foot touch the first base bag? Another look. Oh, that's so close. I have no idea. I mean, you, if it's an exact tie, tie goes to the runner. But mm -hmm. I really have no idea on this one. I'll leave it to the umpires. Frame by frame. And that is 50-50 as it gets. I think he might be out. But I'm not 100% sure. Because right there, is his foot touching the base or is it oh, not? Oh, I think it's touching the base. See, I don't know. Is it? Or I think it might just be the fuzz like of like the frame. We'll see from the backside angle, we just can't see when the ball actually really gets to Kaylin Lucier's mitt. And right here, I think he's safe. I don't think he gets it till that last frame, but they're going to call him out. Call stands, but one heck of a bunt nonetheless from Cole Sturgeon. His father smiles, couldn't get that call. But his son did a job. Oregon is down to its last out and will be eliminated with a loss. Acevedo deals in strike one. Two strikes left in the ballgame. Up to bat is Ryan Warhank. 0 for 2 tonight, playing center field right now. Ball. Slips out of the glove of Chauvet, but recollects it. Runners stay at second and third. What's Luke Smith thinking right now? Um, for me, I'd probably be thinking do not make the last out, but I'd probably and just I, get a hit, maybe. And unfortunately, Luke Smith does make the last out. In an elimination game, New Hampshire is playing Ohio tomorrow at 1 o'clock.